Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Anu Joshi and I'm a real estate broker based in Toronto and the GTA. I'm also the founder of AnuVision Group. On today's video, I'm going to be talking about condo maintenance fees and what they cover. For the purpose of the video, we're going to be talking specifically about mid-rise and high-rise condo apartments and as condo fees apply to condo apartments. There are some changes when it comes to low rise buildings um, and condo townhouses and other condo properties. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to be talking just about mid rise and high rise condo apartments. So let's get started. One of the main things that are included in maintenance fees for a condo property is paying for your share of the common elements. So common elements includes anything from elevators, uh, hallways and lobby space, which is essentially shared between all the owners um, to also extra amenities. For example, the gym room or the yoga room or a dance studio or a pool or a squash court or a tennis court. So having more amenities in the building will increase your maintenance fee um, because the common elements portion of it will go up. The building management and the board obviously has to pay more money to maintain, you know, these multiple amenities. And so that does have a pretty big impact on um, on the maintenance fees for any given condo. The other th things that um, have a big impact on maintenance fees is your parking, your balcony and your locker. So let me explain. Most condo fees are actually derived um, based on the square footage that your unit occupies. And uh, a one bedroom condo that's 600 square feet versus a two bedroom plus den condo in the same building that is 900 square feet will have radically different um, maintenance fees because they take up different amounts of space. So oftentimes it is a function of the square footage that your unit occupies as a percentage of the whole building. Now, that being said, certain things that increase your square footage uh, above and beyond, you know, the actual livable area of your unit are the three things that I mentioned. So if you have a parking spot associated with your condo unit, you are taking up um, additional square footage in the underground parking garage. And so you would be proportionately paying for your parking. Similarly, if we had two condos, you know, same amount of space, so square footage for living space, um, but one had one parking and one had two parking spots, uh, all of them underground, the one with two parking spots would be paying more in maintenance because they take up more square footage. The same principle applies to units with balconies. Um, balconies are hard to maintain in Canada, especially you have to deal with snow, you have to deal with uh, ice, you have to deal with water damage um, and all of that. So balcony um, units with balconies often have a higher condo fee versus same unit, same square footage without a balcony. A locker is the same thing. If you're taking up space uh, as in square footage um, with a locker, you would be paying proportionally a little bit more. Uh, and so your maintenance fees can differ significantly, even unit to unit, because again, not all condo units um, on any given floor, let's say if we're comparing, not all of them will have a parking in downtown Toronto. A ton of units don't have any parking associated with them, whereas some do. Um, some might have one parking, some might have three parkings in certain areas. I know in Mississauga and Brampton, there are condos with three parking spots, which is wild. Um, whereas in Toronto, there's some studio units or one bedrooms that have no parking, right? Um, same with balconies. Oftentimes in a floor plate of a condo, if you look at it, if there are balconies, it's not necessary that every single unit has balconies. And so that will, impact the amount of maintenance fees that you're paying. Same with lockers. Um, another thing that condo fees may or may not include um, is utilities. So we're talking about hydro and gas. Um, sometimes in older buildings, a lot of the buildings had it included in the maintenance fee because that's just the way that the building was built. A lot of the newer ones, probably the last 10 or 15 years, majority of them have been um, separately metered. So each and every unit has their own hydro meter, gets their own utility bill uh, and is able to pay that separately. So that in that case, it would not be included in the maintenance fee and you'd have to pay it separate. 
Also, uh, in terms of utilities, we can address water because sometimes, um, actually most of the time, I believe, even if your gas and hydro bill is separately metered and you have to pay that separate above and beyond your maintenance fees, a lot of the times the regional water bill will actually be included in the maintenance fee. So it's just a lot easier in terms of billing um, and I think how they actually get the water and to measure it it's a lot easier to do that on an aggregate scale. So as far as I know, many of the times, even if your other utilities aren't included in the condo fee, the, um, the water bill from the region will most likely be included in the maintenance fee. But of course, do check that out if you're purchasing a specific condo. Another thing that is included in the maintenance fee is building insurance. And I don't want you to get this confused with condo unit insurance. Those are very two different things two very different things. Um, so building insurance actually covers the insurance that your condo corporation has to pay to the insurer, uh, liability insurance, um, what else, slip and fall, That I guess that's liability, um, insurance for their common elements and all of that. So uh, if you are ever looking at a status certificate for a condo, you can ask your, um, your condo management company to provide one. Um, you, the building has certain insurances and that building insurance that actually covers the building, for example, the roof or the concrete um, that the building is built of and the halls and the floors and the, not the internal floors of the unit, I mean the hall floors, um, the lobby area, et cetera, that all is included in building insurance and that is shared among all of the owners. So that does uh, factor into your condo maintenance fee. Now, as I mentioned, this is not the same thing as a condo unit insurance. So if you're buying a unit inside a condo, you would have to get your own home insurance that covers um, you know, the insides of the wall of your unit. You're responsible for that. Um, so you do need your own insurance for that. So not to get confused, but building insurance, the actual buildings insurance is in the maintenance fee and payable by all the owners. Last but not least, there's also cable TV, which we don't think about a lot, um, but in certain buildings, especially some older ones, cable TV services and just the way the cable is laid um, is actually included in the maintenance fee, which is pretty cool because TV is very expensive now. Um, as far as I know, I moved into a condo with free cable television, and this is the first time in, I would say, like eight years I've had cable TV because um, we just watched Netflix and, and Amazon Prime and all of that. So um, that was a that was an interesting and happy surprise to have cable TV included. So that was my video just covering um, the main points in terms of what's included and can be included in the condo maintenance fees. Uh, if you're a purchaser, if you're thinking about buying a condo, um, there are a lot of these things to consider. They can vary in terms of condo fee to condo fee when you're comparing condos. It is difficult, but having this list of things to look for, um, it would be great for you to compare, right? If one condo building that you're considering buying has $400 maintenance fee and they don't include anything except the water bill and another one has 700, but all your utilities are included, cable TV is free um, and all of that. I mean, you should compare apples to apples, right? Um, and just be aware of what it is that you're paying for when you pay into your maintenance fee. If you have any questions about condo properties or any kind of properties or real estate in general um, in Toronto or in Ontario or in Canada, um, make sure you send me a message. Uh, I'll put all of my contact details below, but I do hope that this video was helpful. If it was, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel because I do post new and informative real estate videos every single week. Thank you so much for watching this one and I'll see you guys on the next one.